This is your wake up call. <laughs> this guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Uh, thank you, Minister. Um, you're uh, you're going to be using, I assume, information from CSIS when you make sanctions and admissibility uh, determinations. Um, does CSIS intelligence contribute to decisions about who gets sanctioned under SEMA or is otherwise deemed inadmissible? I would say they are um, one of a number of agencies that contribute to the analysis which is undertaken by Global Affairs uh, prior to listing under SEMA. Uh, thank, thank you for that answer. Uh, how often are you briefed directly by CSIS? I'm uh, routine uh, briefly, uh, I beg your pardon, routinely, uh, certainly uh, at least once a week and often uh, more frequently than that. Okay. So you, you receive direct briefings from CSIS once a week or more often? That's correct. Okay. Um, my understanding as well is that CSIS uh, often communicates through written products, through intelligence assessments. Do you read intelligence assessments as well, separately from those briefings? Yes, and it's not always uh, supported by uh, written assessments, but yes, I do see uh, written assessments, intelligence assessments. Okay. Do you, do you read all intelligence assessments that would come uh, into your department? I uh, certainly get summaries of intelligence assessments, and then that is supplemented by verbal and um, um, other briefings from CSIS officials. Okay. So who, is, uh, who receives the full intelligence assessments, and who's responsible for summarizing or, or um, you deciding what information to bring to your attention or not bring to your attention? My deputy minister and chief of staff are um, the two uh, most principal advisors to me who help to uh, prioritize exactly uh, what it is that is put before me in terms of intelligence. Okay. Would your chief of staff and your deputy minister read all intelligence assessments then? I, I'm, I'm fairly confident that yes, between the two of them as well as uh, the staff that are in their offices uh, are able to get access to those reports and then help to prioritize what gets put before me. Yeah, just to put a fine point on to make sure I'm understanding right because I'm sure they're able to get access to them, um, but if, if an intelligence assessment is sent to your department, um, can you say that, that yes, the deputy minister and the chief of staff reads them or one of them reads them or, or, they, or, or would they be reading a summary that somebody else prepared for them? I, I think often it's both. So in other words, they will get both the complete report as well as a summary. And sometimes they, from the reading of the report, will prepare summaries which then directly come to me. Okay. But your, your expectation is that, is that both of them would receive and read the intelligence reports? And that they are delivered, yes. That's correct. Okay. Have you given CSIS direction in terms of what issues they should or should not brief you on? In other, you know, any time X, Y, or Z comes up, I want to know about it directly, or have you given that kind of direction to CSIS? Yes. Okay, um, so uh, we, will uh, will those making recommendations about sanctions or inadmissibility will they always receive those intelligence assessments? Like, is that one of the things that because as, as minister you you will make those determinations around sanctions? Will you directly review intelligence assessments related to those sanctions? Can you just clarify your question, Mr. Genus? What information are you asking about to support which decision? D decisions around uh, around sanctions, because this is the, related to the bill. Uh, if somebody brings, uh, if if you're making a determination about a sanction, uh, would you read? Would you ask CSIS to provide you with the intelligence assessment directly, or would you rely on summaries in that case? I, I may rely on summaries, and if I've got additional questions about um, the source information which went, in, went into the summary, including uh, the original intelligence report, uh, I will certainly ask questions, yes. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, w one, one primary area on which we, we've seen motivation for sanctions uh, is sanctions against individuals or entities that are involved in foreign interference activities uh, here in Canada. Uh, so in relation to that, I want to ask you if uh, in 2021 there was information in an intelligence assessment about Canadian MPs being targeted uh, by the PRC. Was that information in, the, in any intelligence assessments in 2021? Well, as you know, I very much appreciate your question. Uh, I have to be guided by the law under the Security of Information Act in terms of what I can and cannot disclose. Uh, there are strict constraints on that, uh, but we have created forums in which we can uh, declassify that information or allow parliamentarians and or officials to have access to that information so that it can be discussed with Canadians. And I would cite uh, public reports uh, that have come from NCICOP and CIRA in which we are able to navigate those, those types of questions. Okay. Um, if, if an intelligence assessment contained information, uh, you've said it would, it would, 
you know, your expectation would be that it would be read by the chief of staff and the deputy minister. Point of order, point um, of order, Mr. Chair. Um, we're here on S8 today. Um, I'm just wanting to make sure that we're getting evidence that relates to S8 in terms of um, this committee so we can advance uh, our understanding and even propose uh, amendments around the legislation. I'm just trying to listen for, for how this actually pertains to S8 specifically. Uh, and I, 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 I would ask the members uh, through you uh, to focus your questions on uh, S8. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sperry. I'd like to remind every member that uh, we should try uh, to uh, focus our questions on uh, the issue at hand, which is uh, S8. Uh, Mr. Jenis, uh, we did stop the clock. Uh, you still have uh, a minute and 12 seconds remaining. Uh, th thank you, Chair. Um, if information in relation to uh, individuals involved in foreign interference, uh, potentially who should be sanctioned as a result of that foreign interference, if that had been an intelligence assessment in 2021, your expectation is that the Chief of Staff as well as the Deputy Minister would have seen it and that you would have been provided with a summary of that information. Is that correct? Well, uh, let me just clarify, because I, I think you're referring to um, uh, the recent events involving your colleague, Mr. Chong. You heard the Prime Minister indicate that there is a new directive that has been issued to CSIS to ensure that if there are allegations or reports around foreign interference that involve parliamentarians, that that come directly to the attention of the Prime Minister as well as myself. And I assure you and all of the colleagues here uh, that we will uh, adhere to that directive. But prior directive, uh, you still think the Deputy Minister and the Chief of Staff would have seen that information, correct? Well, I, I think, look, it's a very important question that you're asking. I think it's also important to remind members of this committee uh, that, that CSIS and other intelligence agencies make determinations and judgment calls on what intelligence is actionable. It's and a question that deserves an answer, though. Would the Chief of Staff or the Deputy have seen it? Okay, thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Jenis. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Minister, you had strong words for CSIS on the weekend. I want to ask, do you have confidence in CSIS, and do you blame CSIS for the fact that Mr. Chong was not informed about a threat against his family? Uh, point of order, ago? Mr. Chair, uh, on relevance, uh, given our uh, stated agenda for this meeting being the consideration of Bill S-8, uh, and I would just like you to, uh, to consider that. Thank you. Chair, can I respond to the point of order? Thank you. Yes. I yeah, suggest. Chair. Chair, uh, I think the minister's confidence or lack thereof in CSIS is uh, critically important uh, for g given that in, uh, part of S8 is is responding to assessments that are made by our security agencies. Thank you, Mr. Jenis. I, I just like to uh, urge all members to keep it within the ambit of uh, of the bill before us. Uh, Mr. Jenis, please proceed. I. Thank you, Chair. Minister, you, you heard the question. Would you like to answer it or, or not? No, I'm, I'm, I'm quite content to answer it, and I Thank appreciate, you. Um, you know, again, why you're asking these questions, uh, despite the fact that we're here principally to talk about uh, Bill S-8. But, of course, I've got confidence in CSIS. I mean, these are individuals who work to protect our national security every day. And I also point, would point out that you know, your question used language like uh, blaming. Uh, the only people that I think that we need to be uh, united in, in holding accountable are the hostile actors who are attempting to undermine yeah. our uh, democratic institutions, Mr. Genus. Th thanks, Mr. I could just jump in there. I, I, I think there's probably agreement that something went wrong two years ago though and uh, if you think blame is too strong a word fair enough but uh, but but who who carries this error who, who do you think carries this error in that someone was not informed about a threat against their family is that is that uh, was this was the error made by CSIS was the error made by the minister was the error made by the chief of staff who, who made the error I think we have to be constantly vigilant to make sure that our uh, internal governance, including uh, directives around what gets briefed directly in person to ministers who are responsible, including and, uh, and up to the Prime Minister, uh, reflect the state of the landscape when it comes to foreign interference. And Mr. Genus, uh, you put a lot of time into studying this subject matter. I think you would acknowledge that that threat landscape has evolved significantly in the last few years alone, and it's probably evolving uh, just 
just about every day. So okay. making sure that our directives align to those realities is important to ensure accountability. They, uh, thank you, Minister. I, I'm, I'm going to move on, although I don't know that I that I uh, fully got the response there. Uh, at the end of my last round, I, I had asked you specifically if, if your chief of staff or deputy uh, would have seen uh, the 2021 intelligence report uh, on on foreign interference. Um, could you could you clarify? Did did the minister or the chief of staff see that report? Well, again, only because uh, you put the question uh, directly and personally to me. I was not in this portfolio in July of 2021 uh, when the report was alleged uh, to have been, uh, has, it has been reported in public. Um, but again, we are making sure that our directives do reflect uh, the landscape as it exists today so that if there are um, reports that touch on parliamentarians, MPs and the like involving foreign interference, that they will now come directly to me and the Prime Minister. Okay, so I guess the answer is you don't you don't know if the deputy or the chief of staff read the report. But you said you said it's general practice for the deputy or the chief of staff to read these reports. But in the particular case, you're saying you weren't the minister, so uh -huh. you don't know. Is that uh, well? Is I, that I, I, point I, of order. Um, just back to my first point of order. Uh, in terms of the relevance to S8, I'm trying to understand how this will help our committee study with respect to AS8. I don't yet see that. Um, I'm not sure, Mr. Chair, if, if um, the question should be more focused around S8 or, uh, or like, are we just talking about what's in the news today? Thank you, Mr. Again, I just want to remind all the members to remain focused on uh, S8 and to uh, make their questions relevant to uh, the bill at hand. Mr. Jenis. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, what? Thank you. In my final minute, just I want to pick up on something you, you said, Minister. Uh, so it's the it's the matter we're dealing with at hand, which is on the directive uh, that you have issued to bring foreign uh, interference targeting elected officials to your attention. Uh, does that apply to provincial and municipal elected officials as well, or just just parliamentarians? Um, I, I would uh, certainly start by uh, prioritizing the um, uh, members of Parliament who, with whom we work with in the House of Commons, but I also want to assure you, uh, Mr. Uh, Ginnis, that we're looking at other levels of government. In fact, she but, says but provided briefings. specifically in terms of the directive, because I'm almost out of time, does the directive cover... Uh, provincial and municipal elected officials. We will we will ensure that we are briefed directly on parliamentarians, uh, and will make additional um, uh, refinements as as may be needed. Okay. But I also just I think this is important. Um, CSIS has briefed other levels of government at their request. Most recently, right. a number. But, of but it's premiers. a question of what information is coming to you and the prime minister, um, because it seems to me that if if an if a, an everyday citizen is facing the threat of foreign interference, uh, that that should be treated with an extreme level point, of seriousness. Point of order, okay. Mr. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. So uh, in, in that vein, uh, for uh, information used by the Immigration Department that will be involved in the determinations about inadmissibility, um, I assume that when intelligence assessments are done by CSIS, they go to some point person in the Immigration Department. Is that correct? Um, if there are inadmissibility concerns, uh, then those intelligence uh, reports will be shared with the appropriate departments, yes. Okay. Uh, and then it's up to the, the point person in immigration to share with those within the department that need to, to see it. When you were immigration minister, uh, who in your office would have received this kinds of intel intelligence information? Would it have been you directly, your chief of staff, your deputy minister, somebody else? Um, you know, as a matter of general procedure, Mr. Genis, it would depend very much on the significance of the case. Obviously, there are many, many cases which are dealt with and addressed by our delegated authority, so not all of them would come up directly to my attention, so it would depend very much on the individual particulars of each case. Okay, but someone must have been responsible for receiving the intelligence assessments and deciding who needed to see it and who didn't see it. So at what level would that person have been? Um, it'll depend on, again, the particulars of the case, but uh, this is where we get back to questions around internal governance. Uh, ultimately, a minister will depend on their chief of staff and their deputy minister to help prioritize that information flow. Okay. okay. So in, in your current uh, role at, at Public Safety, aside from your chief of staff, which other positions held by political exempt staff in your office receive access to intelligence assessments? Point of order, I'm trying to again understand how this relates to S8 and um, the, the new legislation on... You'll see. What is the difference between these words and not defining uh, I don't see any relevance whatsoever, oh, so if I could just remind you once again uh, to remain within uh, the habit of Bill S8. 
For, uh, further to that point of order, Mr. Chair? It's not only relevant, it's also a parliamentary um, a tradition in that a minister has responsibility when they are the minister and it is uh, not normal by any stretch of the imagination under parliamentary tradition to be asking ministers about their previous job because there is a minister of immigration now who has that responsibility. Thank yeah, you. Just, just, just chair on the same point, I, I've, I've actually moved past that point uh, for, for better or worse. So, uh. the point is sure, Let's yeah. just try to keep this relevant, Mr. Jones. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. I, um, I, I did ask a question, so out of respect for the minister, just is, is he interested in answering the question, given the Point of order, um, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chair. I, I thought you to... already sp spoke about this question yes, and this line of questioning. Yeah. And I'm, we're I'm trying to extend the courtesy to the, the minister. I, I believe um, not, we're still getting the exact same question being reformatted when you already expressed so yourself as chair on yeah. the matter. Do you see the chair? Oh. Mr. Janice. Thank, um, uh, thank you, Chair. I, I, uh, I appreciate that there may be some disagreements about the issue of, of relevance. The point I made at the beginning was that use of intelligence assessments is, is critical for sanctions, and, and the Minister made that point himself. So I'm curious about who sees intelligence assessments, because those are the inputs for decisions about, about sanctions. On that um, point of order, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, point can, of order, can, can we uh, just, the reality is, as the Minister has explained, the actual functioning of the sanctions both on who is sanctioned and how they are delisted from sanctions is not the responsibility of this minister. It's the responsibility of the Minister of Foreign Affairs. This activity is about stopping people who are sanctioned from getting into Canada, yeah. which has been a call from all That's opposition parties, debate. as well as the government parties, to ensure that our sanctions regime is robust enough to make sure that people are inadmissible. Uh, Mr. Janice, please do bear in mind that we're trying to remain focused on Bill S-8. You have uh, a minute and 54 seconds remaining. Thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, Minister, I, I just, I, out of courtesy for you, having asked the question, I wonder if you're interested in answering it or, or, or not. Uh, if, you, if you'd like to address it. Uh, yeah, point yeah, point of it. order, I don't know how many times <laughs> you as chair need to repeat yourself yes, for us to actually get it in our heads about this line of questioning. Can I, can I not it's, offer the courtesy to the minister un, to respond to You know, it's unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable. Janice, please, you've been warned several times. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I, I think the, the question I'm asking is relevant. It's about intelligence assessments that can then be used for sanctions. This is the fourth so my, time. So my question is very... Point of order. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, look, Minister, do, do, you have, do you have any comment you want to make one way or the other on the foregoing discussion? Uh, uh, Mr. Janus, I've, I've been, I think, pretty uh, forthright in answering the question that you posed now a few times. Okay, I, I don't... I, I don't agree, uh, but uh, the public will judge, I suppose. Uh, is there anybody in your office that you can say 100% of the time reads the intelligence assessments that come through? Um, I, I believe you asked that question on a couple of occasions earlier in this hour, and you have my answers on that. Do could you repeat it? Is there anyone in your office who you can say with certainty reads 100% of the intelligence assessments that come through? Yes, I explained that the combination of the officials that work within the deputy minister's office and my ministerial office will take a look at those reports and then prioritize what gets sent to me, either directly through the report or through a summary or through a verbal briefing. Okay, so so who is the who's the exempt staffer that you can say reads 100% of the intelligence assessments? Um, Mr. Chair, uh, again, uh, we, I've answered these questions, uh, and I we'll think you said your chief of staff. Is that is that correct? Does your chief of staff sees every single one? I've, I, yes, okay. very, very right. specifically, Mr. Thanks. Jenis, you've asked those questions now on numerous occasions. Um, I think you're attempting to portray that I'm being evasive. No. I'm not. I've been very forthright. I said the deputy minister and the chief of staff are principally responsible in the prioritization of intelligence that comes before my eyes. That's very clearly on the record now, numerous times. And and they read Point every of order, one. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I, you know, the whole line of questioning I'm out from, of time anyway. from uh, Mr. Jenis uh, has been focused on anything but S8. 